What's going on YouTube? Hunter here, back with another Dash Design tutorial video. Today we're going to be going over the Simulators tab in the Dash Design 2.0 software. Let's jump right in. The Simulator tab here allows you to run the exact firmware that is being run on your Dash and it emulates it here on your computer. So anything that happens or that would happen on the dash will also happen here on screen. This will allow you to, uh, to test your needles, colors, shift lights, even your warnings, alarms, and change page functionality. In the simulator, to, uh, to access it, you'll navigate to this third item down here, and it will open. You will run the simulator by pressing this green button right here, and then the dash boots up. The dash will boot up with your splash screen and then also show your pages. Now for most of you when this boots up it'll be completely blank and this will allow you to input values into uh, into each channel um, so that you can test out what it will look like or what it does when uh, when your warnings are triggered or if you want to see your shift lights occur. So let's bump these shift lights up to 7000 and you see some shift lights start to come on and then uh, at a higher RPM level, they're all flashing at you, depending on how they were set up originally. You can uh, you can input any value, and then it'll show up on the screen. The buttons here are also functional, so you can go through here and see how each page comes up. And then also the splash screen. You can make sure that the splash screen comes up and is active for the duration that you preset. One of the coolest features in the Dash Design Simulator is the ability to connect to AEM data. So to connect to AEM data, you first want to confirm that both your Dash Design software and the AEM data software are both the latest versions. You can go to help and uh, go to about AEM data, confirm that you are on the latest version or uh, simply download the latest version from the AEM Electronics website. Before uh, before running the simulator, click connect to AEM data. Then when you play the simulator, all the information from your data log will show up in the simulator right here. As I scroll through the data log, I can see the values on screen change. You can also simply play the data log, and uh, it'll give you a representation of what the driver was seeing during the uh, during the run on track. Another cool item in here is uh, the ability to show predefined channels or only show the channels that are used. Predefined channels are channels that already exist in the display um, that are not coming in via CAN. Um, so like the spare switch inputs right here, those are direct into the back of the dash, so they're not coming in via CAN, so they would only show up under the predefined channels. Um, and then you could also click to only show the channels used. So this will, uh, this will then only show in this channels list the items that are used in the layout. To allow the simulator to work, the channel name in your log file should be one that is recorded from your dash and the channel names will need to match up exactly um, character for character, letter for letter. For example, um, your engine speed channel here, notice that it does not have a space and in the data log here we also have engine speed no space. If we were to have a space in one channel and not the other, the channel would not connect um, because they are not exactly the same. So if you're seeing, um, seeing something not connect for whatever reason, that would be a good place to look. Another part of troubleshooting in here that we can look at is uh, oil is uh, flashing zero here, and it's not being indicated. The first thing we can do is check in our channels list right here and see if we're logging oil pressure. It looks like in this, uh, in this data log, we did not capture any data for oil pressure, that is why it's uh, it's not showing up when we run our simulator. A good uh, a good thing to do would be to at that point, you know, go into your logger tab and make sure that the logging rate is selected on all the items that you actually want to monitor. So any channel that we want to log, we'll need to define a logging rate. Things like error states probably could be logged at a, a lower frequency to save memory. You know, and then things that are more 
uh, transient and that change rapidly, we probably want to log those at, uh, at higher refresh rates to, uh, to not have any lapses in data. Um, so in this example, I would you know, want to go down and confirm that my oil pressure channel is being set to log so that next time I have that data um, when I connect and uh, when I'm doing my test. So while we're in here, I might as well give a nice brief overview of the logging tab. The logging tab is a very simple tab. It does allow you to set up the logging in your uh, CD7 logging display. So um, the, the log always function that will uh, start your log whenever the dash is powered on. The loop logging function that will erase the first part of your data um, if you max out the memory. So for example, if we were to uh, you know have this log going with the channel selected, we'll have uh, one day and four hours worth of memory at this rate. So when we get to one day, four hours and 35 minutes, it will erase the, the, the earliest item recorded so that you always have the most recent data. This is great if you, uh, if you don't pull your logs that often, you know, and want to make sure that the, uh, the most recent data is there when you do pull that data. Um, you can also set a on-off trigger. Basically, this right here is a uh, alarm that's actually set up. Um, a set of conditions that will be active when the engine is running. So whenever this is a number other than zero, the logging will happen. And you can select any channel you wish. Um, a lot of times we'll make an engine running channel or just simply choose the, uh, the engine RPM channel. So whenever the engine is cranking or running, the dash will log. Same, you can also have a start and stop trigger channel. Uh, it'll start when one channel is active and then stop when the next channel is active. So you can set those up as well. You can also save the logging rate setup or load an existing setup that you have saved previously um, and then you can also clear out all of the uh, the logging setups already um, and start fresh so that was uh, just a very brief overview let us know if you have any more uh, video suggestions or things you want to see all right take care guys